I had the other eight. Can you please grab it for me now? It's right underneath the winter. It was cluttering our. No, it was not cluttering our. It was cluttering yours. And uh, I found the other eight that I was missing. So, so in the studio, I have two cameras. Hey, if you ever wanted to watch and see what we do here in the studio, you got two opportunities. One is you can go to do, uh, Facebook, Patland, Iowa City. Just scroll down and you'll see our a live 360 cam going right now. Um, hopefully it won't cut out in the middle of our segment. Um, but you can also go to YouTube in both or in the YouTube search positively Petland radio show. And it'll pop up. All right. Recapping very quickly. Uh, oh, you're going to go back to this. I okay. am just because uh, it, it bridges the two segments together. I was missing the other eight. Uh, and so running through this quickly, I was giving you 20 amazing facts about dogs. And you can research some of them if you want. Dogs are mentioned 14, 14 like times that, in the yeah. Bible. That's, 14 uh, times. I got to go just to see what it says. Dogs are omnivorous, meaning that they need to eat more than just meat. Yes. Uh, but their meat is, is okay, I won't say anything more. Sorry. Dogs have twice as many ear <laughs> muscles as people. Ha, really? <laughs> dogs will be submissive to anyone they feel is higher up in the pack. Yes. That's, we talk about that. People have been keeping dogs as pets for over 12,000 years. Yes, A female dog time. carries her puppies for about 60 days before they are born. Yeah. Uh, it is a myth. That dogs are colorblind. How they figured this out, I have no idea. They, they are mildly they, seeing color. Yes, they are just not as vividly uh, sightful as a person. Obesity is the number one health problem in dogs. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely, that, yeah. 100%. So you're agreeing with most of these. Yeah. Uh, 70% 70, yes. uh, 70 of people sign their pet's name on greeting and holiday cards. And there are the 20 amazing facts i've never thought about, about signing my pet's name we do put it on there well you're part of the 30 percent, but i can promise you that since 19 whatever my mom has always signed the bird's name the dog's name Excellent. the hamster name whatever it is i still get birthday and holiday cards with seamus mcgee uh, uh angel uh oh she just keepers <laughs> yeah whatever are these are all the pets these from a life Time. No, not, I mean or the ones are that they, are living. Oh, these are living right now. So your mom's got quite a few pets. McGee, uh, Seamus just died last year, so that was on one of the cards. And then Autumn is the name of the uh, uh, bird, hmm. and she signs each one of them. And not only does she sign them their names, she signs them in a script that represents their personality. So Autumn the bird is oh, very nice. elegant and very cursive -y and very flowing. Uh, Your uh, mom's artistic. Seamus, uh, I'm sorry, McGee is the erratic little kind of terrier dog. And so it's very shaky <laughs> and like <laughs> jittery. Uh, Kix, uh, was the, co the Cocker Spaniel, who we're going to feature, was very flowing, boxy, uh, just because yeah. her personality was pretty straightforward, stoic, and yeah. just kind of, you know, it is what it is. But anyway. Yeah, so uh, we're part of the 70%. And I always used to sign Greta's name also. She was part of the family. Oh, I love this. So we're I talking about doing it. We're, we're talking about Cocker Spaniels this week. Right, so we're going to start off. And you got to keep me on track because I think we are, we're running already well into our We are, hour. but hey, all right, we're, we're all good. So the Cocker Spaniel, we have, we normally would have them on the camera, but our sales staff has not graced us with them. And so we're kind of just looking at each other right now going, hmm. Where's the where's the puppies? All right. The Cocker Spaniel exhibited in the U.S. Oh, we're getting this from the AKC. The AKC is the American Kennel Club book that is the official uh, resource when talking about uh, dogs. Yes. And you can actually reference what we're even talking about. Go to PetlandIowaCity.com. We have a little button you can, you know, do for research and breeds. And we actually tap into the AKC to fill all of this in. So... Uh, what does the AKC say about this on PetlandIowaCity.com? Exhibited in the U.S. since the 1880s, the Cocker Spaniel remains one of the most popular breeds according to the AKC registration statistics. The Cocker has a sturdy... This actually goes right to how, you, how your mom signs the name for the Cocker Spaniel. Uh, the Cocker has a sturdy, compact body and a silky flat and wavy coat. He is a merry, well-balanced dog that is capable of considerable speed and great endurance. 
Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Playing with them. Mm -hmm. Cocker Spaniels can be black, black and tan points, party colored, or any solid color. Uh, the history of them, as far back as the 14th century, there is mention of the Spaniel, and they actually spell it differently, which came to be divided into water and land spaniels. The cockers are the smallest of the spaniels, and they don't go in to say it, but it, I think they go back to more of a land spaniel, uh, although they are. Did yours love water? No. Ooh, interesting. We never, we never. Oh, you just don't, didn't. There, there was no avenue for us to okay. even explore it. But the smallest of the spaniels and, uh, and is in part of the sporting group. The American cocker has evolved somewhat differently in appearance from the breed now recognized as the English cocker spaniel. So there's a little bit of uh, divergence from an American cocker spaniel to an English cocker spaniel. Uh, his desire to hunt renders him a capable gun dog. He covers territory speedily, flushing game and retrieving only when under command. He takes to water readily so it's just a fun dog mm -hmm. and that's what you would describe oh as. absolutely yeah. yeah just like let's go rough and tumble let's go walk let's go she loving. was always she was oh yeah she was always down for whatever if you wanted to throw a tennis ball she'd be right on it if she if you wanted her to sit right next to you she wouldn't move for hours all right so yeah so whatever dog. she really would pick up on whatever your demeanor was at at that at that point, if you were energetic, she was going to be energetic. If you were lazy, she was going to be. She's lazy. right in there with you. Yep. That's an, yeah. A lot of dogs. Uh, there's there are some dogs that can be described that way, and the cocker spaniel is one. I always describe the dachshund in the same way, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not as speedy. Not <laughs> as speedy. Yeah, yep. those little dachshunds. All right. Temperament, despite their small size, the cocker spaniel is still an active sporting breed that needs daily exercise, regular brushing, and a trim every few months keeps the coat free of mats. Cockers are intelligent, gentle dogs that thrive as part of a family. They are a shedding breed uh, for sure. Um, so I here personally, uh, that would be an issue. And that's why they do mix cocker spaniels with bichons and poodles and all that kind of stuff cockapoos are are actually quite a popular little mix um but if i had a cocker spaniel all, all i would do in that case is just keep it trimmed i'd go to the groomer keep it a kind of a tighter trim so that the shedding was not that much of a an issue that combined with the furminator we'd have an easy time we always had the traditional coat or the Tra traditional cut with the skirt mm -hmm. and uh oh, and that was pretty yeah oh she was beautiful black and white party coat beautiful dog oh so does um uh, the one that i we didn't have... see the ones that you brought in they're, oh, they're still have... over at the yeah. sales staff <laughs> <sighs> all right so uh they were recognized by the akc back in 1878 so it's been there for a while average size from 13 to 15 inches at the shoulder so kind of a medium-sized dog family pet, and a hunting dog. So yeah, hunters are still using Cocker Spaniels today. Um, where do they thrive? Apartments are okay to have them in. Uh, they do like to run and all that kind of stuff. So you got to put that in your team. Somewhat active indoors. So they are going to run around and all that. So if you have a dainty little home full of precious knickknacks, maybe a Cocker Spaniel <laughs> or larger would not be your breed of choice. Um, they would really enjoy a small yard uh, to run around in and have fun. Exercise daily, love extended play. So they have, so that's that endurance factor. And like we said on grooming, regular trimming is needed. Professional grooming is recommended and daily brushing to keep those mats down. So that's the Cocker Spaniel and Jerry's take on it. I always love it when we can have a personal experience. Uh, I loved my Cocker. Uh, Kix was 12, 12 years old, I believe, when uh, we had to put her down. And she was just failing in health and she was just miserable. And so we made that we made that tough decision like a lot of people do. Uh, but uh, no, she was a beautiful she was a beautiful fun dog. I, I am at the point in uh, life where I have never had to put a dog down. Yeah. And, um, and I didn't grow up with them because my family just, it wasn't the right thing for that, for our family. But now we still have our original dog and all the other little guys. Greta, the Great Dane, we decided not to. And so we just decided, I don't know if there's a maturity level with there that we just said, we're going to manage her in her end of right. her life. And we just said, yeah. whatever she does, we're happy to have every single day with her. I wish I had one more day with that dog. Yeah. Uh, Kicks though, she was, she really was suffering. And that's a tough decision when you get to that point and you say, we have to, 
make that decision for her. Yeah. Uh, she, she would have held on because she never wanted to leave us. Um, but, uh, no, she was a special dog. Very cool. Yep. All right. As many dogs are. Not Not all dogs. (laughs) Are you talking over me right now? No. (laughs) Yes, you are. No, I'm not. All right. But there are some dogs out there. (laughs) How much time do we have on our, our last segment? (laughs) 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All right. So, so again, if you are listening to the show, there was that one dog that I, (laughs) I'm sorry. There was one dog that I had. Oh, you really are going for it. And I am going for it. There was one dog that was just annoying and it it never really fit in with our family. And I'm not going to say who it is or what it is because I'm not about shaming a dog or people or anything like that. But there was one dog that just never quite got it. And uh, I didn't like that dog. (laughs) How old were you when this? Oh, 10. Yeah. So you were 10, 11. Yeah. How did your parents feel about that? I don't think they liked it. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) We ended up giving it away. Oh, okay. So, all right. Uh, It just never fit in. See, Susie, our trouble child, and she is a Maltese poodle. She's just really smart. There are times when we were like, Susie, you just are not fitting in. But we, we, with Susie, she is adaptable. And so she did definitely adapt to us and we adapted to her. And, but that and goes her for that. But that goes back to the point of researching and making sure that that dog fits yeah. in with your, so tying it full circle. Right. Is you have to do the research to find out if that, if you have a high energy dog and you're a lazy person who doesn't like to walk. Sorry, that's just don't not, get a That's family. not going to work. If yeah. you like running and you want a running partner, don't get a dachshund. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there it is. <laughs> this so, is what we like to do in the stores. We get we have the books. When you walk into our store and start playing, the you'll notice that we have the research books right there. You can see them when you sit down, um, and that's because we love to go through that with you and say, okay, here here's what the books say. It's not even my opinion; it's what the books say. And then if you can give a little bit of opinion of that breed, that's too. So that's when you come in and just play you. You're welcome to do that. Um, we go through all these different things. And 70% of the people that walk in the door, for sure, I am going to get this specific breed, whatever it is, walk out with an entirely different breed and found the puppy dog breed of their dreams. So. You have some fun products in, and I see the bioenzymatic uh, uh, stain and odor remover. And it has the famous word that you love saying enzyme enzyme yeah and actually i talked with the manufacturer on this we're going to talk about the three biggest most important top tips for potty training um what i find is is people will get one or two of these tips but they won't get all of the tips uh and will be suffering as a result uh with you know eh, i get a pot you know potty issue once a week or whatever and i go you know what you don't have to put up with that, work with your dog. And these three tips are all very, very friendly to your dog. So the first biggest tip, uh, I wish I knew this on our first dog, Callie, our dachshund. When we got her, she was a year and a half old, had potty training. She only peed and pooed in the house. Um, And that was a big issue. Our kids about a month into it even asked Wendy and I, are we going to be able to keep this Callie? are we going to have to give her away? And we, we said, and we wanted to make an impression on our children. You don't give up on life. And so we said, no, we took the commitment. We're going to stick with the commitment. And so we figured out how to do it. I wish we knew how to use a kennel. This is prior to pet land, owning pet land and all that. It's actually Callie is the reason why one of the reasons why we own pet land. I was so enamored that engineering background. I love questioning things and, uh, researching and all that. Um, that's what got me just totally like, wow, training a dog and learning and all that kind of stuff was so intense. All right. The kennel, number one tip, and it's how to use it. So in the studio here, we have a, just an average size kennel. Um, but I have this movable wall in here. And if you're uh, watching us on one of the cameras, you can see that uh, I'm holding on to the movable wall. You can make that the size of your dog. So you're going to get Uh, to make it the right size today for specifically potty training. So in this kennel, I have a thin little, very easy, easily washable uh, bed. 
and then uh, that wall is moved. And if we had the Cocker Spaniels in here, we could, I wouldn't put them in here because we're a little, we're on a desk and stuff, but I would be, it's the right size for a puppy of uh, like a Cocker Spaniel. If you had like a Maltese, the wall would be actually a little bit closer, uh, a little tighter. The reason being for this little movable wall thing is you don't want your dog to be able to poop and pee in one section of the kennel and then uh, sleep over in the other uh, section of the kennel. That's not potty training. That's just, hey, I got a latrine right here in my bed uh, and, and it's convenient for me. Um, so what the, and dogs are denning animals when they are in a natural den out in the wild under the ground with their mom, uh, mom keeps that, that whole den clean. And so dogs naturally don't want to sit in their appear anymore. And so she shoes them out there and they're big enough to be able to go do their business and then pop right back into the den for safety. This kennel is a den for a dog. And when they're in there, most dogs get it figured out right away. You put them in here at night, and in the morning, they're a loaded gun. You know, uh, if they drank a little too much, just like a child, um, sometimes they have an accident. Well, we'll deal with that. Um, but they'll learn to hold it, and we can work with them as well, cutting the water a little bit earlier in the evening so that they can drain their bladder a couple of times and all that. So when you go and you have your kennel set up and you're coming in the morning to the kennel, I uh, open the door, but I want you to pick up the puppy because I said, you know, the dogs are denning animals and mom would sh sush them outside. They would poop or pee right outside the den. You don't want that because what's right outside your, the den, Jerry? The carpet. Yes. So I had to get Jerry going there. Uh, so I had to pick, you have to pick up the puppy and now you're going to walk directly outside and then actually put them down where you want them to do their pottying and everything so this is step two we're going to step two now so now you put them down out in the grass even in this cold weather that we were having and it's a little warmer now so it's nicer um put them down and i want you to have a treat handy and i in the studio i was gonna demonstrate so you can see it right on the you're gonna here. eat a treat i was jerry nope <laughs> After the after my, the bitters, nope. My uh, staff has I did not know my staff has been trying all this stuff. My God. Uh, and they've tried this. They were talking about doing the bitter stuff and, and all that too. Um, but having the here, I have a lickety stick, which is an alternative treat. It looks like a roll-on, and it here, just smell it. It ah, you know, it doesn't smell bad or anything. It just but you can smell a smell you can smell a smell and dogs love it and so what happens is is when you put the dog down they do their little happy dance and you know do their circles and stuff have that treat ready it smells like wet dog food actually it's probably it's very i bet you it's it's very close very to it. similar to it and there is a there's a great taste to it a very intense taste and a great and an intense smell for the dog so um, when the dog is doing their peeing or pooing, oh, we didn't say poo uh, right off the bat. So we went quite a ways. Uh, into it was about broadcast. 13 and a half minutes. Yeah. Um, while they're doing it, you have to have the treat at their mouth or have the lickety stick right there so that they're getting the treat while they're doing it. They associate what they're doing at that moment to if you do it repetitively and consistently they will then see that pattern and say, I'm going to hold it until I go outside because you give me a treat when I do it outside. So they're going to do it that way. So lickety sticks or having a treat uh, it handy right then is so important. And you're going to learn the first steps in positive training and that, hey, you mean when I give them a treat when they're doing something and maybe even say a, a word like sit, um, they're going to do it over, you know, they're going to do it again if I am consistently doing it and repetitively doing it. And I'm just going to say, yes, you're getting the beginning of training. You're understanding what training is all about uh, in a really easy, positive way that the dog will understand. So when they're pooing or peeing where you want them to, usually that's outside, have that lickety stick at their mouth or have the treat um, at their mouth so that they get rewarded while they're doing it. That's important. Uh, if you have an older dog that's having accidents sometimes, put this into your routine. Go walk outside with them, give them the lickety stick or the treat while they're doing it, and you're going to notice that 
the inside accidents are going to decrease because they're going to hold it and want to do it outside. They're even going to like figure out how to tell you how I got to go. They're going to hear your dogs. Didn't they have, didn't they all have like a little bit of different way of telling you, I got to go, I got to go now. Usually it's just nose on the back door. Okay. My, I have one dog that will come or, up. Or, or they'll give us a look and it will, yes. and, and they'll just, There's they'll come up to you and go over here. Now. Yes. Yep. And then we have one dog that if you, they don't, if you're not paying attention, you got guests over, they'll give you a bat on the yeah. leg yeah, and absolutely. say, all right, I am trying to tell you, yep. I got to go now. You know, yep. kind of thing. So Pay attention what happens to uh, two minutes if, uh, if there was an accident? Oh, how do you, handle you that? are so you're <laughs> such a nice host, Jerry. All right, so then you come into the stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it. What's really cool about this product, and again, I was talking with the manufacturer about it. There's bacteria in here, and that bacteria goes after the stain and the urine and all that kind of stuff, and starts actually eating it up. Why is that important? Every time a dog or a cat urinates somewhere, that's a mark. If it's in the litter box for the cat, that's okay. Just leave it go. But if they uh, urinate on the carpeting, on the wood floor, on the car on the furniture, whatever, you need this product. This has been around for 40 years. This is the best kept secret out there. The bacteria removes that permission to pee that they laid down there. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe they didn't get let out. Maybe they had a little surgery. You'll notice that they'll keep on Maybe going back to Maybe they're spiteful. This. Yeah. I don't, I kind of buy into that one. But I shouldn't have interrupted you. You are on, on a roll. roll. You are on a roll. So um, every time they urinate, that's a mark. So you got to clean it up. You'll notice that if you do have potty issues, they keep on going in the same spot. Go to that spot. And glug glug the stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it. I'm holding the Petland version. It's called Good Dog, um, and that is going to eat up that permission to pee there again. And you're literally, if you use enough of it, okay. If you use it and they come back and they do it again, it just means you didn't use enough of it. So go back, really glug glug it on there. Let it sit for 30 minutes, ooze and ease in into the area. Maybe even blot it around with a towel or something. You're not only going to be able to get that stain up even better, but it's going to saturate that area with the bacteria to get that enzyme going to take that permission to pee away. And then when they come around that area, they'll like be confused because they will go, where did it go? So those are the three tips. Use proper kennel training. Use treats every time they urinate uh, and poo outside to incentivize them. And then if there is an accident in the house, make sure you got stain and odor remover to clean that up. Tell us about Petland of Iowa City. What do you have going on? We are Petland of Iowa City. Hey, we still have some jackets. We just got our last shipment in. Uh, we definitely have boots as well. Winter is not over with It yet. is not over. That's why we got it in. And so if you're still looking for that stuff, come on in. Take advantage of our buy 10, get one free on all of our dog and cat food. Uh, yeah, you know, we track it for you. It is that easy or, and come in and get your day, your, the nails trimmed. You can get your nails trimmed as well. Uh, and we will do that $5 nail trim. You can't be a $5 nail. Trim. What's the paw? Uh, what's the paw stuff that you put your paw guard? I actually have it in the studio right now. It's going to be a little bit warmer this week, but, uh, for I those still cold, use it because those temps, it softens them. Yeah. Yeah. Your Moist dog's and... paws are probably cracked right now. You can get those things healed up with paw guard. We have still some left. We're, we're buying it, so it's easy to get. And uh, it softens those paws up so that they're better in the wintertime when they're outside. My dog's paws are more supple today than they are in the summer months. And you know what? It makes a nice New Year's gift. If you have somebody out there that has a dog, maybe buy it for them and say, hey, I'm thinking about your dog. Ron from Petland like <laughs> Pet of Iowa City, east side of Iowa City, right across from Lucky's Market. It's the Positively Petland Show every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock on Iowa City's News and Sports Station 800 KXIC. Have a great week. Thank you, everybody. Oh, 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 oh.